On June 17, 1933, Morning bustling Union Station in downtown Kansas City buzzed with travelers in heartfelt farewells, unaware that it would soon become the haunting backdrop for a violent and deadly shootout. Four law enforcement officers and a criminal fugitive were killed in a hail of gunfire as they attempted to escort the fugitive to prison. The massacre shocked the nation and led to a significant investigation by the FBI. The Kansas City Massacre remains one of the most notorious crimes in American history. It is a story of violence, corruption, and the struggle for law and order in a time of great upheaval. In this video, we'll look at the Kansas City Massacre. We'll explore the events leading up to the shooting, the aftermath of the tragedy, and the lasting legacy of this dark day in American history. What a year. The Kansas City Massacre Unleashed. Once a bustling hub of travel and connection, the Union Station Railroad Depot became the backdrop for a heinous act of violence, the Kansas City Massacre. A gang, led by the notorious Vernon C. Vern Miller, hatched a daring plan to free their criminal comrade, Frank Jelly Nash. Nash, a federal prisoner in the custody of several law enforcement officers, was being transported back to the U.S. Penitentiary at Leavenworth, Kansas, from which he had escaped three years earlier. Little did anyone know that this seemingly routine journey would soon descend into chaos and bloodshed. The morning sun cast its warm rays upon Union Station, its grandeur overshadowed by the impending darkness. As Nash's captors prepared for their journey, a heavily armed gang lay in wait, ready to unleash their fury. With Thompson's submachine guns, pistols, and shotguns in hand, they unleashed a barrage of bullets upon the unsuspecting law enforcement officers. Unraveling a complex web of crime. Under the shroud of secrecy, a group of individuals with sinister motives conspired to execute an intricate scheme. Richard Tallman Galatas, Herbert Farmer, Doc Lewis Stachy, and Frank B. Malloy comprised the core architects of this clandestine plan. Their aim? To liberate the imprisoned Frank B. Nash. In pursuit of their audacious endeavor, they designated Vernon Miller as the key operative. Seeking refuge at Malloy's establishment in Kansas City, Miller took it upon himself to make discreet phone calls, seeking assistance for their covert mission. Little did they know that their plan was about to face an unexpected turn of events. Meanwhile, a twist of fate brought two notorious gunmen, Pretty Boy, Floyd and Adam Ricchetti, to Kansas City. Their journey was marred by an unforeseen setback in Bolivar, Missouri, during the early hours of the 16th, temporarily stranded with a malfunctioning vehicle, Floyd and Ricchetti sought refuge in a local garage, unknowingly crossing paths with the all-too-familiar Sheriff Jack Killingsworth. Reacting swiftly, Ricchetti brandished a menacing machine gun, effectively subduing the sheriff and the attending personnel. Floyd, armed with formidable 45 caliber automatic pistols, commanded everyone to freeze. The tension was palpable as they swiftly transferred their arsenal into another vehicle, forcibly compelling the sheriff to join them. Their path veiled in uncertainty, the core architects and their key operative continued their mission to liberate Frank B. Nash, unaware of the challenges that lay ahead. Next, we will explore the sinister motives that drove the urge to initiate such a gruesome crime. Subscribe to our channel today and never miss an episode. We release new videos every week, covering a wide range of mystery stories. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. A ruthless onslaught. In their vigilant state, the law enforcement officers proceeded cautiously. Exiting Union Station, they paused briefly, heightening their vigilance. Yet, despite their meticulous survey, they were blindsided by a nefarious turn of events. The sudden emergence of these armed men proved to be a fatal blow. Before Lackey could issue a warning, one of the gunmen bellowed a chilling command. The assailants seized the moment and unleashed a ruthless onslaught, catching their targets off guard. The survivors, Smith, Lackey, and Special Agent Viterli, recounted the harrowing moments that unfolded with alarming swiftness. Time became a blur amidst the chaos, but the resilience of these individuals provided a stark account of the ruthless assault. 
As the dust settled, they grappled with the tragic loss of their fellow officers and the indelible impact of this heart-wrenching tale. The search for truth and justice continued afterward, leaving the enigma surrounding the Kansas City Massacre unresolved. Let's get into the details of the aftermath. That was tough. Very tough. The aftermath. Prompted by the heinous act that unfolded at Union Station, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, sprang into action, launching an immediate investigation to identify and capture the perpetrators responsible for the devastating carnage. However, despite the FBI's meticulous efforts, the case presented challenges due to the inconclusive evidence against the two primary suspects, Adam Ricchetti and Pretty Boy Floyd. The controversy surrounding the incident persists due to conflicting testimonies and divergent narratives. Urschel and Wallace, renowned criminologists, argue that the massacre starkly contrasts Floyd's known criminal activities, suggesting his possible innocence. In Rap Sheet, underworld figure Blackie Audette implicates Maurice Denning and William Solly Weissman as the true gunman, casting doubt on Ricchetti and Floyd's involvement. Let's get into it. Unraveling the mystery. The saga surrounding the Kansas City massacre took an unexpected turn with the discovery of Vernon Miller's mutilated and naked body on November 29, 1933, in a ditch on the outskirts of Detroit, Michigan. Miller's tragic fate leads to speculation and raises questions about the true nature of the massacre. Some authors, including J. Robert Nash, argue that the incident was not a rescue mission but a calculated syndicate hit aimed at silencing Frank Nash, given his extensive connections to the criminal underworld. The enigma surrounding the Kansas City massacre deepens as the search for truth and an accurate account of events persists. Divergent narratives and conflicting testimonies continue to fuel debates among historians, ensuring that this tragic chapter in American history remains shrouded in controversy and speculation. The Kansas City Massacre was a tragic event that shocked the nation. But it was also a turning point in the history of organized crime. In the wake of the massacre, the FBI stepped up its efforts to bring down the Barker Carpus gang, led by Ma Barker. Ma Barker was a ruthless matriarch who masterminded her son's criminal activities. She was also a master of disguise, which made her difficult to track down. But the FBI eventually caught up with her, and she was killed in a shootout in 1935. The life and crime life of Ma Barker is a fascinating story. She was a complex and contradictory figure feared and admired. Her story is a reminder that even the most hardened criminals can be brought down by the law. If you're interested in learning more about Ma Barker, I recommend checking out the following video, Ma Barker, FBI, Gangster Queen, Crimes and... Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.